Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's discuss about something exciting, which as a developer, you will also see that is super exciting, but it's slightly illegal. So we'll take a look at this evil proxy, which has been software that is floating on the dark web. It's a SaaS service, almost like a phishing as a service thing, a new phishing as a service, which is a software which allows you to hack Google, GitHub, NPM, Facebook, any sort of account. You can see the complete list of accounts which are available here from Facebook, GoDaddy, GitHub, anything from Instagram, Microsoft, NPM. And these are like, you know, someone who has access to your company Google account, for example, can pretty much access a lot of things. So let's take a look at what exactly this is and what, what is this claim that this evil proxy can hack accounts on these websites. Let's take a look at how this actually works. And it is super interesting. So stay tuned till the end of the video and we'll discover a lot of interesting things about the software if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow so let's first of all understand what phishing is phishing as a service which is this tool is built on a very simple concept phishing by nature is showing a fake screen a fake login screen, a fake registration screen to your victim, and then somehow tricking them to enter username and password into that website. The fundamental problem or the fundamental thing which you have to do here is trick the user into believing that the user is entering the username and password and everything on the same website, on the website which where it is supposed to go. So if you're on, you know, if I just construct a Google login page and send it to someone and someone enters their username and password, they have been fished by me. Now, why is this evil proxy special? Let's understand that. So you see a lot of websites, a lot of platforms now address phishing using a multi-factor or a two-factor authentication mechanism because you can fish and get username and passwords, but you can't actually get the, you know, the one-time OTP or that screen. Even if you get that, that is it. Once that is entered, that OTP gets invalidated, right? Because that is a one-time password. That's a multi-factor authentication. So what this evil proxy does in a way is that it almost acts like a simple reflector, right? It's a, it's a proxy which is sitting in the middle and it just reflects all of your actions to Google as if that proxy itself is the user, right? So let's take a look at how it actually works. Step number one, user puts their password into the phishing site, which is let's say if I send you to google.codedam.com instead of codedam.google.com, which it should have been, let's say, let's assume you went to google.codedam.com and you see a page which looks like Google, right? Where you have to enter your email and password. That's step one, you do that. Step two is what I do, usually phishing sites, what they don't do is they don't communicate with the original host, right? But in this case, me, the owner of google.codam.com, I will also send that username and password request to Google itself, authenticating myself as you right? Authenticating myself as a user. Now, of course, Google would not like that because I'm signing in with a new device. So it's very likely that Google asks for a multi-factor authentication or a CAPTCHA or something to me. So let's say we have two-factor authentication enabled on Google and Google asks for that. So Google is asking me, the server, google.codedam.com for a multi-factor authentication and me, the server, would show the same form to you, the end user. These cover step three and four. The fifth step again is that I, as a user, enter the multi-factor authentication credentials. This could be an OTP, this could be a Google Authenticator code, this could be a backup code, anything could go here. Then you submit it to me as a user, I submit it to Google as acting as a user and Google now returns me a set of cookies. Now this is where it gets interesting. Why? Because cookies is the ultimate key, right? So you see all of this protection, which is in place, two-factor authentication, multi-factor authentication and everything is to grab a cookie or a set of cookies, which your browser when requests or sends a call to an API endpoint of google.com, they read that cookie and they say that, okay, this user is authenticated or this user is validated for the next 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes or anything, right? One hour, one day, anything. So what essentially I have done, google.codedam.com, is that I acted like a user, but in the final step, I stole the cookies which were responded by Google, right? 
and I, I could give them back to you as well or I could just keep them to myself and you know redirect you to login page again that's a secondary thing but this is how this attack works let's actually try to see this attack in action which is also in a form of a video on this blog post so you see we visit instead of accounts.google.com accounts.rproxy.io which is just a random website and this website pretty much presents the same page as Google important thing about here is that this website looks exactly like Google right the developers who have created these this phishing page have made it look like exactly like Google form and this website first of all convinces the front-end user that this is Google and it also has to convince or it also has to constantly talk to Google for example when we see when this user enters this email you see this gets loading indicator and everything and it is most likely interacting with Google's backend as well so you're submitting your email to our proxy our proxy is submitting that email to Google you submitted your password our proxy is submitting through that to Google as well but in the mean way, meanwhile, it is also recording your email. It is also recording your password. It's storing it somewhere in the database. You see now it asks for your OTP. So this is the screen which Google returned to our proxy and our proxy returns it back to you. So you see this config, this website is already, this phishing page is already configured to handle everything. They have basically just reconstructed the whole Google login flow. And uh, yeah, that's it. All the choices you make here are being synchronized with the session on Google, right? So Google is thinking that you are trying to log in, but in fact, you are trying to log in via a proxy website. Now, the moment you enter this code, this code in itself is not useful because this will be destroyed or this would change in a while. But once you enter this code, the cookies returned by Google, cookies returned by Google are stored by our proxy.io. And you can see that this website then redirects you to accounts.google.com to make it look like, you know, some glitch or something happened. This is how it can basically bypass any sort of multi-factor authentication as well and you know it's just a phishing but it's a smart phishing where it is also constantly in touch with the original host original provider and in a way I don't think there is any way to bypass or any way to secure this except for you know Google or Chrome just you know showing that red banner screens that deceptive site ahead that is the only thing but that also is not exactly a foolproof thing because people can change domains right and you can see that this domain or this tool is available on on darknet using you know that is how you can set it up using simple gui and uh, yeah i mean it it it's not easy to build this tool because you also have to constantly make sure that you are synced with how the ui looks on the front end and how the back end api calls work but it's a SaaS tool, right? At the end of the day, someone has created a software which works, which works perfectly on some of the most popular websites like GitHub, NPM, and these are like, I mean, someone who bypasses your multi-factor authentication on GitHub and gets access to your authentication cookies can just directly plug it into their browsers and you know browse your GitHub. And it's actually like super dangerous because not only they do they have your account access but for example github also has a pseudo mode which requires a password again they also have your passwords because the phishing flow can record username and password and everything so this enforces another point that on internet if you're browsing anything if you're signing in with google on any website or anything you have to be extremely careful to take a look at the domain name always it should always be google.com it should always be github.com apple.com facebook.com it should not be some other domain which is looking like the same domain but it has you know the domain is different so absolutely make sure that you double check the domains you double check if you're a little more into security you can also go and take a look at for example if you go to websites like you know if i go to facebook.com for example you can go and you can check the certificates as well most of these big websites like google also for example work on their own registry sometimes where they issue certificates by themselves so that is also something which you can take a look at but nonetheless as long as you are careful with the url with what appears in the url box you should be safe. So that is all for this video. Hopefully you learned something new, something interesting. And this is super interesting as a developer because this would have involved a lot of work on the front end and back end to make multi-factor authentication bypass for so many websites. But I do like this exist and there's not a lot people can do about it except for being careful right so yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you like this make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon
If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.